everybody out of the bar. Now, little girl, you and I are gonna have a drink together, yeah? What? You, you switch the drinks? Poor baby. Guess what? <laughs> Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Inn. I'm your innkeeper, Vase Odin, and today we're going to be talking about Jenny Barnes, the dilettante. Guinevere Barnes was born to wealth, although it's not clear if her parents were rich because of legal family wealth and good decisions, or due to involvement in more questionable endeavors. Her still living parents set up a trust fund for her and her sister, Isabel, which the two sisters enjoyed endlessly. But Izzy, with her short attention span, would get bored very easily and move on to the next exciting endeavor. That is, until she got bored again. But she always wrote Jenny and told her about each adventure. Her last letter came from New England while Jenny was in Paris. Jenny felt a darkness in the words written on the page, and fear overcame her. When the letter stopped coming, Jenny knew something had happened to Izzy. This is where Jenny's life took a turn she was not expecting. Izzy's wanderlust took her to a dark place, and now she was missing. Jenny flew to New England to investigate her sister's disappearance and immediately became embroiled in a sinister plot somehow connected to a green man medallion in her possession. Jenny found Izzy, who was involved with the cultists trying to summon Shubnigarath's brood. Izzy was to be some sort of sacrifice, and despite preventing the sacrifice, Jenny was unable to rescue her, as Izzy was taken away during a major gunfight during the rescue attempt. Izzy could still be alive, and Jenny will not give up searching for her, even though she's starting to think that Izzy may have been a willing participant. Jenny's inner thoughts about Izzy imply that Jenny has a very realistic view of her sister's flaws, but also there are hints of some sort of mental disorder, possibly bipolar disorder, although it is not strictly mentioned. This is a very interesting part of Jenny's character. It adds complexity to what could have easily been a boring rich girl who just happened to be looking for her missing sister. The fact that her sister has these flaws and how Jenny handles all of it is a welcome dimension that fleshes out her character in a unique way through a third party that we've hardly ever met. During her initial investigation, Jenny stopped at a speakeasy where her sister was known to frequent. The owner, named Dainty Donahue, slipped something into Jenny's drink, but her wits alerted her to trouble and she switched the drinks without Dainty noticing. Having rendered Dainty unconscious with his own poison, Jenny took the opportunity to search him for clues. Although she found few clues, she helped herself to Dainty's custom 45s. They were hers now, and they have been a signature of her character ever since. In Arkham Horror the Card Game, Jenny is a rogue with 8 health and 7 sanity. Her stat line is all threes and her special ability allows her to collect an extra resource every round. Her Elder Sign ability is an extremely bland and disappointing plus one for each resource in her possession. Nothing else needs to really be said about that. Jenny has a 30 card deck limit with rogue cards level 0 to 5 and she can add 5 level 0 cards from any class. Jenny is an interesting investigator who is deceptively complex and very difficult to build, especially for solo play. If you're a new player, I strongly recommend playing with a few other investigators with a more specialized role before attempting to build for Jenny Barnes. We'll start with the good. Her high health and sanity are great, and they really help her survivability tremendously. The rogue card pool is full of cards that help survivability and resource management. And you also get to pick five level zero cards from any faction, allowing Jenny to be fine tuned for whatever purpose you wish. Also, having a three in every stat gives creative deck builders a blank canvas to build Jenny however they wish, be it a killing machine or a clue gathering beast. 
We'll take a quick look at her signature cards and then we'll delve into the more complex portion of Jenny Barnes. Her signature asset card is Jenny's Twin 45s. This uh, asset is X cost, where X is however many resources you want to pay. It has three agility icons and one wild icon. And the X is really, really awesome because Jenny generally has a lot of resources to play with. You can play this weapon and put it down with a ton of ammo on it. Let's say you pay 10 resources to play it. These guns are going to have 10 ammunition and are plus two to fight and plus one damage. It's a really, really good weapon. The only drawback, it is a two-handed asset, so it'll take up both your hand slots, meaning you can't use other stuff like flashlights and things like that. Her signature weakness is searching for Izzy. It is a task weakness, and basically once it pops up, you have to attach it to the furthest location from you, and then you have to investigate using two actions. And then uh, if you succeed, you get to discard it. Um, and then it goes away. And if you don't, if you just leave it there and finish the scenario, you're gonna take a mental trauma if it's still in play. So this card generally is uh, quite punishing, actually. Um, not only do you have to spend several actions moving to it, especially in a larger board scenario, you might have to spend more than one turn trying to just get to the location. And then you have the problem that you have to spend two actions to investigate, and it's not a guarantee. If it attaches to a location with high shroud, you might fail a few times, which means every time you try to, to get this out, off the board, it's taking two actions. So you're looking at a possibility of several rounds just to get rid of this card, and that's not a luxury that you have in most scenarios. So, you know, you could be taking mental trauma. Uh, you know, the, the benefit is... I believe other investigators can do this for you. So if someone happens to be closer or better at investigate, they could go ahead and get this taken off on your behalf. And that's at least a little bit more helpful in multiplayer. But it, this can be a very tough uh, weakness uh, once it comes out. If you purchased the novella Hour of the Huntress, then you also got some replacement cards uh, that you can add to your deck in addition to her standard signature cards, or you can replace them with these uh, alternate cards, what they call replacement cards. The signature asset is the Green Man Medallion. It's a one-cost accessory slot asset with two wild icons, and uh, you can use a free action to spend up to three resources and exhaust the medallion, so you could basically do it once around, and um, place the resources on it as offerings. And then when the game ends... Um, for every six offerings on the medallion, you can reduce the experience cost of the next card you purchase by one. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this can come in really handy if you have the resources to spare. You know, I haven't really had a chance to play too much with it to see it in action. Sometimes a card looks good or looks bad on paper, but when you actually play with it, it plays a lot different than you expect it. So I'm not quite sure how to feel about this one. It looks good. You know, generally Jenny does have a ton of assets lying around, so uh, this gives you something else to spend them on, and if you get more than six resources on it, then great, because you're always going to be upgrading cards anyways. If you added the replacement asset to the Jenny deck, then you have to add the replacement weakness as well. You can't mix and match, and you can't just add one and not the other. So the replacement weakness is Sacrificial Beast. It's a four-fight three health, two evade uh, creature. It goes on the location furthest from you, and when it's out, you can't gain resources from card effects. Now, this the fight of four can be a little bit troublesome for Jenny, especially when it has three health, but it doesn't hunt you, and uh, the punishment that it, that it gives if it's still on the board is not terrible. Not being able to get resources from card effects is not bad. That'll kill Jenny's special ability, but you still get your resource every round from the normal upkeep phase. And then, you know, uh, you can still use an action to gain a resource. So it's not like you're stuck and dead in the water. So not a huge deal, not terribly punishing. You know, if you have time to go kill it, kill it, but generally it's not gonna be extremely punishing and you could just leave it sitting there and it's not gonna be a tremendous deal. 
All right, now that we've covered the signature cards, let's dive into the more complex aspect of building a deck for Jenny. When you first look at her, uh, she seems very powerful, sometimes overly powerful. Having no stats below three seems really amazing, and the extra resources every round give someone the impression that a stat pump build is probably the best way to build her. Don't get me wrong, adding the pump talents can make for a good deck, but it's more difficult to make it work than it seems. And when I say pump talents, I'm talking about the talents um, such as hard knocks and physical training, where you could just spend resources to boost your stats for a skill test, and there's no limit to how many resources you can spend for this in a round. Now, um, simply throwing in every pump card available is going to make for an inconsistent deck, and you're going to find yourself frustrated with assets on the table that boost skills that you probably don't need boosted, and then the ones that you need will be buried inside the deck. This isn't going to happen every time, but having all these different uh, pump stack cards um, can, can create for a more inconsistent experience uh, as to which one is going to be on the table when you specifically need something different. Now, I'm not going to give you a specific build for a pump talent Jenny deck, they do exist, and they can be very good if built right. But uh, you can find some good ones on ArkhamDB, and I recommend you look that up. Look for ones that have a lot of reviews and a lot of uh, likes and hearts or whatever, uh, and then see if, if you like any of those. So what do I recommend for Jenny? Well, having no single stat over a 3 is a bit of a hurdle in my opinion. It means that if you're playing anything but easy... Jenny's going to need assets in play or skill cards just to get her to an acceptable number to pass a skill test. This means Jenny has to build a board state to get going, kind of like a mystic. There's no single test where if you're playing standard or higher, Jenny out of the box without any ability score increases where she can comfortably take this test and hope to pass. Other investigators have stats as high as a 4 or a 5 where you can roll with that without any boost and you have a chance of passing the test so th this is why i say all threes is actually kind of a drawback now you can um actually let me um let me give you an example just to beat this dead horse a little bit more so let's say you want to make her into a fighting investigator well you're gonna have to put a beat cop in play just to get her to a four in combat and if Beat Cop dies, you're going to have a hard time hitting things. And if you try to build her as a generalist, and you kind of have to if you're going solo, you'll have a hard time making her work consistently if you don't have experience with building solo decks. So in my opinion, she's even harder to build for solo than Mystics are, because at least they rely on one stat and usually have a high score in that one stat. And most of their cards will let them do just about everything that needs to get done using that same stat. So they only have to one to worry about, whereas Jenny has all four to worry about. So not only do you have to spend turns setting up a board state for her, but you have um, at least two stats that you're also going to need to get to an acceptable level. And in multiplayer, I don't usually recommend going for a generalist build because of this uh, specific um, scenario so in my experience multiplayer Jenny shines most when she specializes especially in clue gathering and uh, evading with great neutral cards like trench coat uh, to boost evade and flashlight to help her investigate Jenny can get more consistent results without using up all of her splash cards than say building her to fight uh, and get clues so with her rogue card pool, Jenny has tons of agility icons to commit to test and cards that can help her get away from dangerous situations, such as like Elusive. She can also get Cat Burglar when she gets some experience and that could really help as well. You can then use her five out of faction cards to get an ally like Dr. Mylon Christopher or Alyssa Graham to boost her intellect to four and then a magnifying glass to get to a five on investigate checks. Now, alternatively, you can just use her five out of faction slots to get free clues with cards like Drawn to the Flame, Scene of the Crime, or Look What I Found, 
and this works better for multiplayer than solo because a lot of these cards gather multiple clues in one go. And remember, these are all single-use cards. And rogues don't have a lot of clue-getting options. So if you do this, definitely pack two flashlights and two copies of Perception. Sleight of Hand and Contraband can also help get more uses out of your flashlights. Now, on the other hand, if you want to build Jenny to be a, a combat-focused investigator, it can be a little bit more difficult, definitely can still be done. Obviously, you're going to want two copies of Machete and one other weapon. Like, you know, the 45 is pretty good here, but Fire Axe works well too. Um, also, Prepared for the Worst is a great way to get her guns or machetes into play. I would then purchase physical training and as many skill cards as possible that will help you boost combat. And also, Dynamite Blast can be really fun in a Jenny deck. Now, there are no good level zero neutral weapons currently that at least good for Jenny, uh, but some rogue choices can be fine until you get the machete out. So I would aim for at least six or seven total weapons if you're building her as a combat character. Double or Nothing is also a great card to add to a combat Jenny deck to do some nice damage. Now, don't be fooled by sneak attack or backstab though. Add these cards to an evasion Jenny deck, not a combat one. Having backstab means you'll want to spend more cards boosting agility just to get to 3 damage. And this is not an ideal situation for a deck that is made to kill things using your combat score. Skip it if you're building for combat. Uh, same goes for sneak attack. Spending an action to evade and another to deal 2 damage uh, in a deck with good weapons in it already is not particularly efficient. Especially when you could just attack twice for 2 damage, or hit with a weapon for 2 damage with just 1 action. So, don't let the card fool you, it's not testless damage. You have to evade first, which, if you build her for combat, you probably aren't going to be good at. And then, once you successfully evade, then you deal damage by taking another action and playing the card. And... You, you can make it testless damage if you combo it with a free evasion card like the Stray Cat or something like that. But now you're talking combos that are very specific just for 2 damage and it's just not worth it in a combat Jenny deck. Um, also, it can be tempting to add Leo DeLuca in the deck. After all, Jenny can certainly afford his friendship. But unfortunately for Jenny, her ally slots are much better reserved for allies that grant a passive boost to a stat like Mylon Christopher, Beat Cop, Hired Muscle, Cat Burglar, you know, those allies uh, are much better in a Jenny deck, in my opinion. Now, don't get me wrong, Leo can work. As always, as I always say, in certain builds, almost anything can work. But just know the consequences of picking him instead of a passive stat boost ally and adjust your deck accordingly. Uh, one last temptation uh, is to add too many resource generating cards. This can work if you build a support deck with Charles Ross Esquire and some pump cards. Just don't overdo it in a deck not meant for that kind of thing. Jenny already gets a lot of resources. So overall, I think Jenny is a very cool character. Her story is neat and her ability can be powerful in the right deck. Her average stats and lack of a high score in at least one stat make her very difficult to build properly. This can be especially problematic for inexperienced players who may see all threes and think it's a benefit, not a challenge, and they usually find themselves frustrated with a deck that rarely excels at much and is sometimes overshadowed by everybody else. That said, with no stat below three, she can at least have a fighting chance in easy on any skill check. In standard, it just takes a small boost to get her to an acceptable level to pass just about any skill test making her ideal for those who want to build her in very specific ways. Do you have any good tips for building Jenny? If so, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to see them and read all about different builds for her. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions at all, please leave them below and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. This is Innkeeper Vase Odin, and I'll talk to you all real soon. I'm everybody's daddy. Thank you.